So at the end of last year, I made a mini desk aquarium without a filter. It was a really fun project. The video got quite a lot of views as well. I think it's now one of the most viewed videos on my channel. So super cool. Unfortunately, that tank didn't really develop like I imagined it. It was also quite difficult to maintain. And because of that, I've kind of been neglecting it. So today we're going to rescape it, turn it into something that's a little bit easier to maintain. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's get started. So this is the current situation of the cube. As you can see, it looks pretty bad. I think for the past two months, I haven't even used the light. I basically just placed it in the window and let it run on natural daylight. Plants are still growing well, but I mean, without maintenance, you're just gonna get algae. So we're gonna take it down, empty it out, and just start from scratch again. I might use a few plants here and there. I think for sure the asparagus fern, I just really love it. So we might use that again in the new layout if we can make it work. So yeah, let me just uh, clean this tank out and then we can start over. Here we go, tank is all clean, background added as well. So we're ready to get started. Now what we have here is a 20 centimeter cube from F-Zone. I'll leave a link to this specific one in the video description together with my discount code. And in the video description, you can find links to anything that I'll be using for this build video. So it's a very small tank. I mean, it holds maybe 10 liters or like two US gallons. So it's way too small for fish, but we can definitely keep some shrimp in here, maybe some snails as well. So it's just gonna be like a simple plant tank for some beautiful colorful shrimp. So I'm using a different light this time. This is the Chihiro C2 RGB. I'm quite a big fan of Chihiro's lights. I just like that they're app controlled, you know? You don't need these big analog timers or those expensive smart sockets. It just makes it a lot easier. I do feel like it's a little bit too big for this small tank. So maybe in the future I will swap it out for something else. But for now, for the setup, it will work just fine. Okay, stop set it in. I've gone for the Dental Plants Aquasoil. Started using this a few weeks ago and first impression seems very good. Plants are growing well, very little algae issues, so I'm happy with this stuff. I would like to have some decorative sand in the foreground, but let's first move on to the harsh cape. Okay, I think I'm gonna keep the hard cap like this. It's really simple, it's just three rocks, but quite like how it looks. And I wanna keep this layout simple as well and just stuff it with a lot of plants. I mean, it's gonna be a no filter setup and for a no filter setup, it's always good to just have a lot of plants and the hard cap is not as important. Now, because it's such a small tank, I didn't really order any plants, but I saved a few plants from the previous layout. So we have some uh, dwarf hair grass, some bush flandera, of course the asparagus fern. I still had a few pots left over from other layouts. Not sure if there's anything really worth using in here, but I mean, I have quite a lot of tanks, so I can also take some plants from the vase, for example. I'm gonna take the vase down soon, so I'll probably take some of this uh, Mirafilum Guyana. This cube is getting quite overgrown as well, so maybe I'll steal some plants from here. And then of course, we also still have the 90p, so I might take some plants from there as well. Okay, let's first start with the asparagus fern. I wanna plant it in this back left corner, so I think I'm just gonna fixate it to the, the light stand. Here we go, so it's kind of just fixated to the light. Doesn't look the best right now, but I think once the root kind of the roots kind of find their way into the substrate, it should be able to stand on its own. Then over here in front of the roots in this little corner here, I'm gonna plant the uh, Mirifilum Guyana. It's quite an easy, relatively fast growing stem plant as well, so it should be able to cover those roots. Over here in the center, I'm gonna plant Blixa japonica. This is not the easiest plant, but I've also planted it in my no filter vase. And over there it was doing quite well. So I'm gonna give it a try in here also. Awesome. 
Then in the right corner, I'm planting Amania pedicalata golden. This is also quite a demanding plant, so it's gonna be a bit of an experiment. See if it works. And if it doesn't work, we can just replace it with something else. Then in the edges, I'm going to plant some dwarf hair grass. It's a very shaded area, but in the previous layout, they also didn't have any issues with that. So hopefully it's gonna be the same in here. I've glued a few bush flandera to some small pieces of dragonstone. So we can just place them instead of having to plant them anywhere. So we're almost done with the planting. Next up, I'm gonna do something that I usually don't do. I'm gonna cover all of the aquasol with sand. I have the beautiful 88 Colorado sand. This is a very warm color, so it kind of matches the dragonstone. Yeah, I think the soil granules, they, they're quite large. And in this small tank, they almost kind of throw off the, scale, the sense of scale, you know? So by covering everything with sand, hopefully it will look a little bit more natural. So the tank is all filled up and I've also added a small bunch of redwood floaters. Now to speed up the plant growth a bit, I think it will be cool to add a little DOI CO2 system. So let's make a very simple one that has been working very well for me. All we need is an empty bottle, some sugar, some yeast and some gelatin. I'm going to measure out roughly 250 grams of sugar and 250 grams of water. It doesn't have to be super precise. Then we're going to bring that to a boil. And in the meantime, I'll soak three gelatin leaves in some cold water. Once the sugar syrup has started boiling, I'll turn off the heat and stir in the soaked gelatin leaves. This needs to cool off a bit so we can now prepare the bottle. First I'm making a small hole in a cap for the airline tubing. And to make sure the system is completely airtight, I'm adding a few drops of super glue as well as baking soda around the tubing. I've also kind of roughed up the cap a little bit with some sandpaper to make sure the glue sticks properly. Now that the sugar syrup has cooled off a bit, we can add it to the bottle. The bottle then goes in the fridge to set the gelatin, and this can take a few hours. The last step is to mix a little bit of yeast with some lukewarm water, and I also like to sprinkle in a little bit of sugar just to give the yeast some food. A few hours later, gelatin is firm and we can add in the yeast water. That's our CO2 system complete. The yeast will consume the sugar and produce CO2 for about 2 months or so. And if you want to know more about these simple CO2 systems, I will leave a link to a more in-depth video in the description. Okay hey guys, a few weeks have passed since this tank was set up and it has developed quite nicely. I'm really, really happy with it. I've added a small group of uh, orange neocaridina shrimp and they're doing really good. They've been here for a few weeks now, already had babies, so yeah, there's like a nice little colony in here. Uh, besides the shrimp, there's also some uh, bladder snails in here. And if you look closely, you can see these really tiny bugs. I think they're freshwater copepods or something. It's like a nice little ecosystem, you know? So yeah, most of the plants are doing well. They've grown quite a bit already. The Milifino Guiana has already been trimmed once. Um, the only plants that are done, do, not doing that good is the Blixa and the Emania. I mean, they have grown a bit, just not as much as I would like. Um, I am still running CO2 in here. I'm just, I've just removed it for the final shots, you know. Um, but I've kind of, I'm thinking of removing the CO2 altogether. I feel like it's not really doing much for this small tank because we don't have a filter, so there's also no flow. So the CO2 is just going straight up to the surface and it's just not really being dissolved properly. So it's actually not really increasing the CO2 levels by that much, you know? And I think the Amania and the Blix, I just want a little bit of a higher CO2 concentration. Now I am dosing a little bit of liquid fertilizer in here, but very, very little. I'm currently using the APT Complete, so it's a complete liquid fertilizer, has all the nutrients that the plants need. And I'm just dosing one pump, so it's just one pump every week. That's it. Super simple, you know? Oh yeah, one more thing actually. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I might change the light. I haven't done that. I'm still using the Chihiro C2 RGB, but I've now attached it to this like little base plate. I think they call it the Chihiro C2 base. It's sold separately, separately and I will leave a link in the video description. 
But I think this actually looks much better. Like before it was mounted on the, onto the glass, but now with this base plate, it's like a nice little setup. So that's it, cute little desk aquarium. Super simple to make, like literally anybody can make this. And it doesn't really cost a whole lot either, you know? So yeah, if you are thinking of setting up a little desk aquarium, either for your home office or maybe even want to take it to work, I would say go for it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <music>